Let me give her that clarity, because what I've said has always been completely consistent. Uh, I don't want us to leave without a deal. There will be a lot of disruption uh, if we did. But if we were in that situation, in the end, I believe this country is strong enough to find a way to flourish and prosper. The trouble is, this doesn't seem to be what he said on the radio this morning, and I'm just holding him to account. He can't go around telling all sorts of different people different things and not expect us to be listening, because we are, because we are the opposition and we will hold you to account. And you need to be consistent, because you are in government and you are supposed to be in a leadership position. That's the point, and that's the point of this debate. And that is the point of this debate. So, as I say, to, to give all these different, different accounts and to try to be consistent is what we wish him to do, because... Because does he not believe this? That it was, should he not also accept this? As he said, as I understand it, back in 27, 2016, and this is what the Foreign Secretary said, we need to negotiate a deal and put it to the British people, either in a referendum or through a fresh general election. We will trust the British people to decide on whether or not it is a good deal. If he thought that was the right course of action to pursue in the event of securing a deal, surely, Mr Speaker, the Foreign Secretary accepts that that is the only course of action to pursue if there is no deal at all. And we have had that general election. At 80% of voters supported parties that wanted to leave the EU and the single market. But as she's mentioned consistency, will she just give a straight yes or no answer? Does Labour or does Labour not want to end free movement? When we leave the European Union, free movement will end, and it is our policy that there should be, fr there should be fair rules and managed migration. We believe that immigration should look after our economy and should look after our, 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 our communities. That's the answer. It's a full answer. It has been consistent. And I think that if the, the Honourable Gentleman would like to listen and listen to what it is the Labour Party does, sa has said, with the consistency that we will be listening to what he says, um, he will find that we are consistent and our policy is clear. If I, unless the, unless the Honourable Gentleman has any other questions um, on, on Labour's policy, I propose to sit down. The Shadow Secretary of State completed her oration. She has. Right. I call the Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, Jeremy Hunt. Well, excellent timing, Mr Speaker, because... Um, of course, she's just, I think, said that Labour does want to end free movement um, without then explaining how they will deliver frictionless trade with no more barriers than we currently have, which is Labour's policy, even though she knows the European Union will never accept that. So um, I don't think we'll take any lessons on consistency from this side of the House. But, Mr Speaker, we've had an excellent debate today, and I commend all honourable members who have spoken. It is a shame that we do not have the Shadow Home Secretary in her place yeah, at the end of this debate. Um, but I do want to thank the honourable member for Islington, South and Finsbury for her references to one of my favourite childhood films, Lassie Come Home. Lassie, of course, in that story, was given to a member of the aristocracy, in fact, the Duke of Rutling. Um, but Lassie wasn't happy, and she broke three without any kind of referendum, and she came home. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. there is a, a lesson for all of us. Now, today's debate is focused on immigration, and the central point, the central point made so eloquently by my right honourable friend, the Home Secretary, is that leaving the EU allows the government, for the first time in over 40 years, to respond to public concern by restoring sovereign control over immigration policy, part of which is, of course, being generous to EU citizens who live amongst us and contribute so magnificently to our national life. And here, if she was here, I would like to reassure the Shadow Home Secretary and the honourable members for Ealing Central, Oxford West and Abingdon and others who raise the rights of EU citizens in this country, because part two of the withdrawal agreement describes how EU citizens currently living in the UK will enjoy broadly the same rights after we leave. And indeed, if we leave the EU without a deal, the Government has also made it clear that their position will be the same. So whilst she was correct to remind us that we are talking about the lives of real people, our friends, colleagues and neighbours, I would respectfully suggest it does not help to say there is any doubt whatsoever about the status of EU citizens when in fact there is no doubt. And the Honourable Member for South Shields, 
I thought, spoke extremely passionately about the effect of uncontrolled migration on her constituency and how it risked dividing communities. So she, along with many people on this side of the House, will understand the significance of restoring parliamentary sovereignty. But we haven't just today talked about migration, and I want to commend my honourable friends and members for Mid-Sussex, Harridge and North Essex, Rayleigh and Whitford, Romford, Rochford, South End West, Bosworth and Mole Valley for emphasising the obligation that falls on all of us to honour the referendum decision. Um, I think that, uh, although I didn't hear all of those speeches, one of the most powerful interventions came from my honourable friend, the member for Hornchurch and Upminster who said that if we don't deliver Brexit, it would confirm people's deepest fears about the conceit of the political class. And to her credit, when she was here, the Shadow Home Secretary was clear that we have to honour the referendum vote. But what we on this side say to members opposite is that if you really do want to honour that vote, then stop playing parliamentary games and remember that Leave voting Labour voters will never forgive the Labour Party if they use parliamentary procedures in a way that ends up stopping Brexit. And I would say to the honourable members for Ealing Central and Liverpool Wavertree and others who called for a second referendum that they would risk doing profound damage to the integrity of our political system. It could not be right to ask the British people to vote again in the hope of producing a different result. And they should listen to the wise words of my friend, the Honourable Member for Mid Dorset and North Pool, who talked about the breach of trust between politicians and the people who give them their jobs if we were to fail to honour the referendum result. I give way to the Honourable Lady. For giving way. Um, he said about trust and he said about validity, I think. Does he not accept that the points that I raised in my speech about the illegality in the referendum have already caused mistrust and people are doubting the validity of the outcome of the referendum because of the things that went on, which have been found by our regulators, the Information Commissioner and the Electoral Commission? I would just say to her, this is a matter for the Electoral Commission, but, but, exagger no, but exaggerated claims were made on both sides of that debate, as indeed, I think it is fair to say, they are generally made on both sides in general election campaigns as well. But people listened to those claims on both sides and they came to a democratic decision. And that is the foundation of trust in our country between politicians and the people who give them their jobs. Um, I'll give way to the Honourable Lady. Yes. Thank the Foreign Secretary for giving way. And further to the point of order given by my honourable friend, does he not accept that, in addition to what she has just said, that there are many points of evidence and fact that have now come to light that weren't available at the time? Because in 2016, the referendum was on the principle of us leaving. Now we know exactly what it looks like in practice. And on the basis of what we know, and also listen to what our constituents and what the country wants. And you have to look at the polling that's been done on an almost daily basis to know that this country has moved. And now seeing the reality of it, actually wants to have a final say on the government's exact deal rather than the principle back in 2016. What I gently say to the Honourable Lady is that last year we had a general election yes. in which both parties set out what they thought the shape of the Brexit deal should be, and over 80% of voters voted for parties that wanted to leave the EU and leave the single market. So the task before us is to recast our relationship with our nearest neighbours whilst preserving the bonds of friendship that all of us in this House prize so highly, and we need to go about that task with every confidence in our strengths as a nation, as my honourable friend for Harwich and North Essex rightly reminded us. And my right honourable friend, the member for Mid-Sussex, brought home the momentous importance of this task, reminding us with a sense of history we admire so much that this is one of the most important decisions the House has taken since the war. And as he powerfully said, the moment has come for all members to come together in the national interest. Now, on defence and security, my honourable friend from Berwick-upon-Tweed spoke with passion and eloquence, partly in French. And je voudrais dire à mon ami, ne t'inquiète pas, because uh, contrary to Sir Richard Dearlove and Lord Guthrie, that means don't worry, because uh, there will be absolutely no impact whatsoever from this withdrawal agreement on our relationship with NATO, 
on our intelligence partnership with the United States Project or indeed our membership of the Five Eyes. I give way to my honourable friend. Well, we shall continue in English, perhaps, for everyone else's pleasure. Um, my concern is not in the Dear Love Guthrie letter. It is my assessment of the combination of political declaration and parts of the withdrawal agreement which put together give me personally my own simple understanding real concerns about future risk. And I would be very grateful if you would sit down with me and look through those in detail because they are genuine concerns. They don't come from anyone else but my own assessment. Well, of course, I would be absolutely delighted to do that. And I give way to my other honourable friend. Speaker, and I thank my right honourable friend. Um, I was concerned in the draft withdrawal agreement to re read the phrase that there will be increased intelligence uh, cooperation. And I asked the Prime Minister on the 10th of December about this, and she said there is no problem with the Five Eyes Agreement, none whatsoever. Well, my honourable friend is absolutely right, and I, I do want to reassure everyone in this House that it is a paramount negotiating objective for the government to make sure that we maintain an independent foreign and security yeah. policy, always has been, incidentally, yeah. and always yeah. will be. Um, now, the, the right honourable member for the honourable member for Glenrothes was right to warn about the dangers of xenophobia and small-minded isolationism. No one in this House would think on those terms. But he's totally wrong to suggest that the view on these benches, as my honourable friend for Ockhill and South Persia said, in any way reflects that approach. And I can tell him that within the framework of the new immigration policy, there will be no cap on the number of skilled workers who can enter the UK. Uh, the honourable members for Liverpool, Wavertree and Oxford, Western Abingdon spoke about the impact of leaving the EU on our universities, and I can reassure them that the new immigration policy means there will be no limit on the number of international students who can study in our universities. And this is very important because our international reputation benefits immensely from the excellence of our universities. Um, and then one group that we haven't talked about. Uh, but we're coming to a close, is the rights of the nearly one million Brits who are living in Europe, and the withdrawal agreement protects their rights as well. So, in conclusion, Mr Speaker, as time is marching on and the weekend approaches, we are now in the final stages of leaving a supranational organisation that has been central to our national life for 46 years. We all have deeply held opinions on this issue, but the voters who sent us here are looking for honourable members to reach a consensus on the way ahead. Britain's friends across the world, the governments I deal with every day, hope and expect that we will leave the EU in an orderly way and emerge as a reinvigorated ally on the international stage. So let us rise to the moment, meet those expectations and show that whatever our views may be, Lever or Remainer, we are all Democrats proud to be in one of the oldest democracies in the world where we do what the people tell us. Well, the right honourable gentleman has talked the matter into the buffers. Debate to be resumed what day? Monday, 14th of January. Monday, the 14th of January. Thank you.